So some people have asked me how I personally use Anki, which is an app for digital flashcards, to study for my A-levels. In case you dismiss the conventional use of physical flashcards before you click off this video, I want you to know that Anki is an app which makes uh, the flashcards experience very different from the conventional approach, neither wasting time on the aesthetics of the card, nor doing unnecessary repeated practice of cards you already know. Hi, my name is Mario and I am a 16 year old A-level student from Spain. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I use Anki flashcards as an A-level student. This video is gonna be divided into two parts, which are gonna be uh, creating the flashcards and revising the flashcards. You might know that the reason why uh, students underperform is because they don't test themselves enough. So Anki is a great method to apply both active recall and space repetition into your studying. Making sure to test yourself enough on space intervals to maximize your retention. I explained this in past videos and there are many other great videos out there which explain both techniques. So here I am inside my Anki uh, flashcards app. So as you can see, I have lots and lots of decks of the different subjects I have been taking in the past uh, two years. So let's start by creating a deck uh, so you can see uh, how it works. So basically this is uh, for classifying the different uh, flashcards that we're gonna be entering. You know, you can have different subjects and you can have different subtopics. So uh, let's go and name this uh, astrophysics, why not? Okay, so we have done this. So it will be added uh, in this case in here because it starts with an A, it goes alphabetical order, but it doesn't really matter, you will find it. So in here we have astrophysics and we want to create a subtopic within astrophysics, let's say black holes. And it will also, you know, create in here as a normal one. So we can basically put it underneath by just dragging it. And, you know, you can see this line. So you just leave it in there. And it is uh, a part of astrophysics. So if you already know this, you can already start producing flashcards. So let's get into adding the real flashcards and creating them. So here we are in order to create a new flashcard so that we can add the flashcards into our created decks. So right now I'm gonna go and select the deck I want to uh, add a flashcard to. So in this case, we're gonna go into Astrophysics Black Holes. And so that you can see how it works, I'm just gonna do a simple demonstration and state the definition of a black hole. So right now I'm just gonna say it is a region where gravity is so strong that no light can escape from it. This is a very simple uh, definition, but I think it will work uh, good enough. So what we can do in here, uh, we can add images. This helps a lot in uh, not only uh, visualizing what we're talking about, but also making it more uh, dynamic and attractive uh, to use. So yeah, let's just go and take the image of a black hole. And there we go, there we have the image of a black hole. So we can also add images for the solutions of the answers if we're talking about uh, questions involving calculations. And you can also have images for uh, different questions you wanna uh, remember and, and nail for the final exam. So you can also, you know, just take a screenshot, add it, and it will be very, very easy to quickly create flashcards for these past paper questions. So yeah. And then apart from this, you can see that we have many, many options in here. Um, to do different stuff, we can make text uh, bold, for example, say gravity, because it's an important thing. We can make it bold, we can make it italics, we can uh, underline it as well. We can even uh, write some basic formulas. This has nothing to do with black holes, but just, just you know, E is equal to MC squared. So we can go here and click the two, and there we go, and we have a very nice uh, formula. So as you can see, it enables you to do lots and lots of stuff. So we can go in here and let's say make H2O. So we can also make uh, chemical compounds and, uh, you know, put them nicely. So yeah, this is very, very cool. Uh, you're able to do lots of stuff. You can play with different colors. You can even add files uh, and add uh, an audio if you want. I haven't even tried it because I don't see why. I would use it, but I suppose that some people might benefit from that. So yeah, now what we would do would be simply to click uh, add. But before that, we can see that there's a type. And what this means is the type of flashcard. We can have the basic one, which basically shows you the front and then you try to recall it. And then you see the back so that you can have instant feedback. However, we can also uh, have 
one for typing the answer, one for close, so that we can, for example, a missing word, we can uh, complete it. So there are lots of ways in order to make a flashcard. I'm just gonna go with the basic, which is the one I usually use. Maybe for uh, multiple choice, I could sometimes use the typing, but for uh, all the others, I just go with the classic. So yeah, we will just go add and our flashcard will be created. So right now we're gonna go into part two, which is a revision of flashcards. So uh, I'm just gonna go through some uh, flashcards from uh, chemistry and physics, showing you how I personally uh, approach it, uh, my way of revising, and how I intend to do my revision to not only maximize my uh, memorization, which sometimes is important, but also my explanations, my understanding, so that I'm really able to grasp the concepts and understand what's going on. So let's start by doing some chemistry. I'm gonna do a uh, unit two chemistry, AES. Okay, so here's a question. Which molecule has the highest boiling temperature? So in this one, uh, multiple choice, we would need to know uh, first, uh, what are we talking about? So in this case, the question is about branches. So we know that the one with the lowest branches will be the one with the highest boiling temperature because they will stick uh, together more closely and they will attract each other more, making it more uh, difficult, require more energy. So uh, it could be either A or D, which has no branches at all. So another concept important here is that the longer chain will be the one that uh, will involve a stronger attraction between the molecules. So we're gonna know it's D because it's a bit longer and therefore we have the highest boiling temperature. So we'll go in here and we see in here the correct answer, which was D, as I said. And we see that we have in here the explanation, which I think is the most important thing because in the end, the answer is really not gonna help you. This question will probably not enter uh, the exam, but uh, the concept within it will uh, almost for sure. So it is important to make sure that you know the reason why things happen, the reason why in this case it is D. So the explanation is the most important thing out of all. So let's go and do some physics. So right now let's go do some uh, physics flashcards so as you can also see how I do it. So let's go do some waves uh, within electricity and waves of physics AS. Okay, so which of the following types of waves can be used in fiber optic telecommunication systems? So we have four options. So I know in this case that it is infrared radiation, the one which is used in fiber optics. So yeah, uh, this is pretty straightforward. Why is it? Because it's like that. In here, there's not much explanation. It is the one that is used for its uh, frequency and wavelength. So let's go into a more complex question. This one involves six points, which is a lot. This is probably one of the questions worth the highest marks in the exam. So in here, we can see uh, that they give us two images and stuff. You can see I have the image in here that I got from the past paper. So it says, explain these observations. So in here, once again, I recall and uh, I know that in here they want me to talk about uh, interference of waves. In here it's uh, constructive, in here it's destructive. So they want me to say that when constructive interference happens and the waves are in phase and their path difference is uh, n lambda and in constructive interference, the uh, amplitude is maximum because the two waves join, making a resultant amplitude. And in trace three, we can see that on the other hand, we have destructive interference. Waves meet in antiphase, uh, producing the lowest possible amplitude. And uh, we also have to mention the path difference, which is n plus one over two, everything times lambda. And basically, if we mention that, I think we get the, the full marks. So we can check in here and, you know, this is one of the questions I uh, know better out of all, and you can see that I have been working on it because I just basically know it all. And if you're able to know uh, questions in this way, you're just gonna kill it because you, you will know the six points, you will not waste time, and you will get the most marks possible. So yeah, thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it and that it helps you get started with Anki or improve your workflow. You might also want to check out my video on how I use Notion as an A-level student right here and my video on Barra Oakley's A Mind for Numbers, which gave me lots of cool takeaways you might want to benefit from. If you want me to make more videos on something specific, just let me know down in the comments. Consider uh, clicking the like button and subscribing if you want to see more of my videos. So yeah, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.